Hey, what's up? This is Matt Harvey from Exhumed and Gruesome. You're watching Richard Metal Fan, so turn it up, dude. Hey, what's up, guys? Episode 239 of Richard Metal Fan Interviews calling from Zoom, and I have round two with Matt Harvey from Exhumed and Gruesome. Thanks for coming back on, man. How are you doing today? I'm doing good, man. Thank you for having me again. Anytime, man. Anytime. So we're here to discuss your uh, new uh, solo album entitled Toward the Cold Light. Right. So well, tell me, can you talk to me about like the whole writing and recording process of, of it and how this whole thing came to be and that good stuff? Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's a little weird because I actually have been sitting on this record for a while. So I got to kind of think back because most of the writing I was doing like last winter, like early in 2023. Um, and, um, you know, basically I was kind of, getting up pretty early like around six or so and i would be outside walking my dogs and uh <laughs> i live not that far from the coast so in the early mornings a lot of fog and it's it's a pretty rural area where i live um you know it's a neighborhood but there's the hills and trees and shit everywhere so it's very um you know just a lot of cold sort of misty mornings outside and it was just kind of like a vibe that i was getting from being outside every morning and um you know the sun would be up but it would still be like you know 35 degrees or whatever which for california you know uh, for a native californian that's very cold <laughs> <laughs> um so that was kind of the inspiration and i would i would just be outside and kind of get these ideas for melodies and then i would go home or or come here to the studio and just sort of start working through developing these melodies and and kind of deconstructing them reconstructing them and you know just kind of experimenting with different kinds of sounds and different production techniques and you know pretty soon uh i had you know <laughs> i had the most of the record you know yeah yeah and what would you say would be the significance of the title toward the cold light um well you know it was one of those things where uh as i was sort of thinking about what you know the <laughs> what the ep was going to be about or kind of what i wanted to evoke with it um again i would be out walking in the morning walking towards the sun which was not warm um and i thought that that it had sort of a cool it sounded kind of a little bit more impressive you know saying it like that and i was like well it kind of sounds like it's like you know you're dying like go into the light or whatever. Um, and it's also just sort of like, you know, it's like that Blue Oyster Cold song, Astronomy, you know, the, the light that never warms. Um, so there's sort of like, I don't know. I, I mean, to me, it just, it sounds kind of like dying and it sounds kind of like, um, you know, seeking something that is not going to give you what you want i guess um so there's sort of like a because in the whole thing i think all the songs the main thing that i was sort of i guess going for is there's some sort of like bittersweet sort of longing to everything um and that phrase just kind of summed it up nicely i thought you know yeah and what made you decide to make this album and what is like the overall inspiration for it um, well, you know, I kept, you know, I started writing this stuff without really any plan or expectation. And then, you know, before I knew it, I had like, you know, three or four songs and I was like, well, I guess this is becoming a thing, you know? <laughs> so I figured, um, I would just kind of, I don't want to put a lot of pressure on it and, and try to make it into like a whole, you know, 80 minute epic or whatever. Or even try to think about like it needs to be like a full length album kind of thing. I just was like, I'm just gonna write and develop this stuff until I'm sort of done. <laughs> and it just kind of, you know, I got to that point and it, and it felt done. And by that point, you know, last year I was starting to get really busy touring and I kind of um, just set it to the side. And, and eventually I um, had, had my friend Leon Del Muerte master it. And then once the touring cycle kind of got done last year, you know, around just after Thanksgiving, 
then I was like, okay, well, I, I should probably do something with this stuff. And it was also winter again, which kind of got me like back in that vibe and thinking about these songs. So, I mean, you know, it's a weird thing because it's like when you're out kind of by yourself in nature, I mean, yeah, I was with the dogs or whatever, but <laughs> mostly we're just walking outside, you know, um, and unless they're barking at another dog, uh, you know, you're kind of just on your own trip. So you spend a lot of time, you know, a, a good like 30, 40 minutes every morning, just sort of feeling introspective. And, and so those kinds of that sort of introspective vibe, I think, was sort of the inspiration for the album, but also the external environment as well, you know, with the, the wintry, misty, cool, sort of damp, you know, yeah. mornings that are, I don't know. Yeah. And and where was the album recorded at? Um, mostly probably uh, here in our studio, but then also I know I was doing like some edits and stuff just on my laptop. Um, you know, it's a wonderful thing, the state of technology today, as much as it's often vaguely horrifying it's also really convenient for for making music and being able to sort of um produce and edit and and you know work on stuff kind of as and when you know um it's all stuff that i can just sort of be like shit i have an idea and then i can grab my laptop and then start working on it whether it's at the house or whether it's you know here at the studio or or, or wherever you know i think i was working on some of the mixes like towards um the end of the process I, I, I would work on them in the van even you know yeah yeah and i noticed like with this al album it's more kind of very ambient and and a very synthy there's this uh, synthy sounding so what made you decide to sort of like branch out and do something different that like not that pretty much everybody that known you from like exhumed and gruesome and stuff <laughs> stuff stuff would would be would not be expected to hear i mean you know I think it's it's really just a case of I, I listen to all kinds of music. I think you know I love metal, obviously, um, but I feel like you know I know some people that only listen to you know metal and they listen to like sad metal and and you know dancey metal and folk metal and all this kind of thing, which uh, doesn't really interest me. <laughs> um, I, I don't think metal works that well to do. To sort of encompass those emotions but that's just you know obviously everyone's opinion is different um but for me um you know it was just <clears throat> I, I think that you know the, the, there's a whole spectrum of human emotion and and a whole spectrum of music that goes with it and um you know hopefully i'm <laughs> capable of of experiencing the full spectrum of emotion and uh just kind of using the musical tools that i feel like fit that emotion you know rather than guitars and and drums and stuff although there is a, a little very little bit of guitars and drums on, on the album but um and you know the other thing is that I, as i've improved as far as you know composing and producing and and mixing and everything else i have all these tools at my disposal that sort of have shortened the window between like i have an idea and then now it's a thing and you know closing that distance really um kind of empowers you to try different things and to branch out and to you know just sort of see what happens you know yeah yeah and sort of like like being being as this is a solo album how different of a mind frame is it working solo as opposed to working with exhumed and gruesome and any other projects that you've been a part with i mean it's really different <laughs> um you know the, the only thing that's that's kind of the same is that you know when I, when i think when i'm writing something um I always, you know, I try to listen to the part and then I think, well, what, like, what do I feel like comes next? Like, you know what I mean? Like, where is, where is this leading? And that part is the same because I hear a part. I'm like, okay, so what follows? Um, but then aside from that, it's, yeah, it's very much, you know, it's like writing prose or whatever. It's a very solitary thing. It's just like a guy in a room or, you know, in my case, a guy, <laughs> it could be anybody, but anyone just in a room by themselves with headphones, sort of, you know, dissecting stuff. But I mean, it's not, a, a, it's not a weird way for me to work because uh, I'm, I don't know, I'm an, uh, I grew up an only child. So I'm used to spending a lot of time by myself or whatever. Um, so it felt natural, but it's also kind of in a group setting, you have that 
that sounding board where you're like, I have an idea. Is this good? And someone will tell you, oh, that rules or, oh, that sucks, dude. Don't do that. <laughs> so editing yourself and kind of, uh, you know, finding the, the confidence to not just believe in your ideas, but also the, the confidence to be able to say, no, that idea sucks, throw it away. Um, that part is a little bit more challenging, you know, um, and the, and the production side, just sitting in a room, you know, or it's sitting wherever and, and just trying to make these decisions completely by yourself. That's kind of, um, it's a little bit daunting, you know? Yeah. And, and of course, from what I was doing, my research search, according to one interview that you did with decibel, you said that you've done, uh, work with a virtual MIDI instrument. So how different of a feel is it working with virtual like instruments versus like live instruments? It's really completely different. Um, and it's something that I kind of started doing during the pandemic a little bit. Um, and, you know, I'm finally getting to the point where I think I'm, you know, fairly good at it. Um, uh, it's, it's really completely different and it's very, it's very meticulous and it's almost in, in, in a clinical way. Whereas, you know, playing the instrument, you're still kind of, you know, there's still that connection between sort of like th there's a physical connection, whereas this is just like a purely mental thing, you know, it's sensory as far as hearing, but it's not, there's no tactile element. There's no like breathing in time with the music kind of thing. So it's, um, it's a very different process, but it's what it lacks in sort of immediacy. It makes up for in flexibility because you're able to, um, you know, explore just like a limitless fucking universe of sounds, whether it's like a cello or, you know, some sort of distorted human breath or whatever. Like there's all kinds of just like weird uh, sounds on this record that, you know, kind of, and those sounds become inspiring in, 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 the, in themselves. So it's almost like working backwards or whatever. Um, so it's, it's very, it's very different, but it's really rewarding. And, and it's really, you know, it's like a rabbit hole that I just kind of keep fucking going into, you know? Yeah. And, and of course you've released this album like independently as opposed to like working on a label. So how different of it, of, a, of it, of sort of like the whole process is like working with a label ver and being independent was, or sort of like the pros and cons between the two. I mean, it's the thing is, I guess, you know, doing this release, I, I, you know, I, I, I spoke to relapse because I work, you know, I've worked with them forever and I kind of just, I'm like, Hey, I'm doing the thing. If you guys are interested or whatever, if you think you have time or whatever, and, and for whatever reason they passed on it, which is fine. Um, and I just kind of thought like, well, I don't know enough about this kind of music to sort of shop the, the, the record. You know what I mean? Like if it's a metal record, like I, I know plenty of people that do different labels and, and there's sort of a pre-existing network. And I thought, well, I have to, I can't just keep sitting on this album. You know, it's almost a year old. So I need to, to put it out myself. Um, and I, you know, the con is, I guess, that I don't really know much about this. Um, you know, I, I don't have a network in this genre of music. Um, you know, the pros are that because I'm doing it, there's no real expectation or whatever. I'm not worried about, uh, <clears throat> I'm not worried about making money off it or anything like that. I just really want to sort of allow people to get a chance to hear it and you know if they want to pay for it on Bandcamp, that's fine if they want to download it for free that that's fine too you know um so it's really you know it's a record that nobody was asking for that nobody needed you know it's not like the label had to schedule it and allocated the, this money to press it or whatever so it's completely free from expectation and it's just a way of kind of just putting something out there and you know, a lot of people that like Exhumed and Gruesome will be like, why would I ever want to listen to this? And that's totally fine. Because um, it's not necessarily marketed for the same audience. It's just like, you know, I, I don't even really know who the market is for it, to be honest. Um, I just know that I like it and I care about it. And, you know, hopefully enough people hear about it and can decide if they like it as well, you know. 
Yeah. And with with toward the cold light with the the music and the sound. So what kind of like the things that inspired you to write this kind of style of music? I mean, I'm a big I'm just a big music fan in in general, you know. I like I don't, I'm not really into like ska or like i i don't like new metal but those are, aside from that i think i kind of like at least a little bit of every genre or i can find something to like about it um and i love you know i love the orchestra um so you know starting with strings and then sort of branching out from there strings and piano um it's just a really cool way to to explore things i mean you know i listen to everything from you know Tangerine Dream to the Supremes to fucking Sore Throat to, you know, Necropsy Odor or whatever. Like, I, you know, I'm all over the place. So it's fun to just sort of dabble around in, in, in different areas and kind of see what um, what makes sense for whatever it is that I'm trying to convey, you know, like in, in this case, it really is. It's more it's kind of more emotional or whatever, you know, there's like a I mean, I think that those instruments just work better for the kind of like nostalgic sort of, like I said, bittersweet kind of vibe that I, that I thought that I that I was kind of trying to put across, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And and with a with a solo album, but I mean, sort of like talking more about like the songwriting, does it does like the, the inspiration sort of like come come from like a personal experience or do you try to like put yourself in that sort of mind frame in order to, to create this kind of music? It's not really like a specific experience or whatever. Um, it's more just sort of like, a, you know, I'm sure part of it has to do with, you know, I'm, I'm getting older, um, <laughs> which, you know, beats the alternative. But, you know, you get like a longer perspective on things and you sort of, you know, things that, that everything becomes a little bit more emotionally complex, I guess, um, at least for me, you know, when, when I was younger, uh, it was, I experienced things maybe more black, white, you know, sort of um, <clears throat> more, I, I don't know, they, they were a little bit more binary. And now it's sort of like, you know, in every, for everything that, that is good, there's like, you know, there's sort of a trade off or something that, you know, you, you'd like, well, I like where I'm at, but then you kind of think about like, oh, well, you know, this is the life that could have been and that's sort of sad you you like there's all these roads not traveled and all these things not done and things that you're like oh well you know you, you sort of look back and have these different perspectives on on things and um it's all fairly complicated i guess and so i think again like i said i don't think metal is is a good way to express something that, that that's that complicated or at least the metal that i like you know nobody listens to like pleasure to kill and thinks like wow that's really emotionally complicated <laughs> just like <laughs> oh this is like violent and aggressive like i get it um so it's not it's not a specific thing you know um it's just a it's it's a it's a bunch of things you know uh whether it's you know friends and relatives who've, who've passed away or or you know previous relationships or, you know, career regrets or any of that stuff, but also positive things as well. You know, I mean, it's not like, I don't think the album is like a total downer. I, I think it's more contemplative, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And kind of wanted to switch topics because I want to turn back the clock because because sure. next year will mark 10 years of Gruesome's debut album, Savage Land. And I thought that was a really great debut. So what I wanted to ask is, is, is what was sort of like the thought process in, of that? And is there maybe a chance to get a celebration of that somehow? Hmm. Well, with Gruesome, I'll address the second part first. Right now, we just finished. I actually just got back from Florida on Monday. And we just finished writing the new record, which is sort of our human. Um, and so all of our focus has been on that. And basically all of our plans for next year um, revolve around that. Um, those plans are still, you know, basically we're, we're kind of firming up the details of the recording. Um, and then we'll start, you know, looking at, at what, what else we're going to do. So there's no real plan for acknowledging the 10 year of, of Savage Land because excuse me because this record has taken forever to write and you know we really need to to sort of focus on that um but 
that is wild that that record is almost 10 years old but that's kind of shocking <laughs> um you know as far as the the thought process the thought process for that record um it wasn't quite as specific as the ones that came after because um i don't think that any of us necessarily imagined that there would be a, a second record so it's not you know dimensions of horror is very screen bloody gore um twisted prayers is very spiritual healing and then savage land kind of is a mishmash of all of the first three you know um there's there's definitely some some sort of spiritual moments and some screen bloody gore so it kind of you know evens out in the middle at, at leprosy um and really like i said i i didn't think that there would be a second album so i just kind of threw whatever at it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um but of course it was all you know specifically designed to be you know just basically like death songs you know it was almost like if there was some leftover tracks from <laughs> from the albums that like never got recorded you know this is probably they, they would sound maybe something like this um and really getting into that mindset that that chuck had uh as far as you know he's a very he has a very specific musical style that really carries through even from screen bloody gore to sound of perseverance there's certain things that he does and he sort of adds on you know a little bit each album um but there's still kind of these things that he does that are pretty consistent so it and because death you know really 90 percent of all the music writing is chuck so it's maybe a little bit easier to sort of latch on to stuff to make it to do an homage because it's so specific to him you know rick did a lot of writing on leprosy and, and a couple of the things on the demos and stuff and james wrote a few bits on spiritual healing and then really after that it's just chuck so you can kind of <clears throat> you can kind of anticipate maybe what the music might do in a way that you, maybe you couldn't with other bands where there's sort of more collaboration and and you know uh, and things like that so yeah we just I, I just kind of keyed into you know what is the most like chuck thing to do and then try to like just sort of follow <laughs> that direction you know um yeah. because obviously you know chuck is no longer with us to to make more records and we just thought it would be a fun kind of homage that ended up sort of like spiraling. <laughs> I don't know if it spiraled out of control, but it certainly spiraled well beyond my expectations. I thought it would be sort of like a novelty record that, you know, a few people would be like, fuck these guys. And then a few more people would be like, oh, this is actually awesome. And then most people would be like, you know, but it ended up sort of like finding an audience. And then, you know, now here we are 10 years later, um, you know, getting ready to record album number four. So it's kind yeah. of wild. And kind of back to the solo thing with Toward the Cold Light, you, of course, you've, you've worked with uh, on the engineering with your former Exhumed bandmate, Leon. So what was that like working with him? Leon is one of the easiest people to work with because I've known him since like 95, 94, 95. Um, so... I, I mean, he's he's a better engineer than I am for sure, um, and so he did the mastering and and kind of, you know, gave me some some mixing advice or whatever. Um, but you know, it's just like working with your brother. <laughs> um, he and I know each other really well. We're one of those, you know, we have a friendship where it's like maybe we won't talk for like six or eight months and then we'll hang out and it's just like you know, no time has passed whatsoever. And you know, Leon has no problem telling me like no this is wrong don't do this <laughs> or like i don't know man this idea kind of blows so um it's really valuable having somebody to work with that that you trust you know and you trust not just to give you honest feedback but they understand you and they're going to give you good feedback yeah um, so i love working with leon and you know we continue to play with him in exhum whenever there's a schedule conflict with ross and you know i, I think that that will probably be you know indefinitely <laughs> forever yeah. you know, he's he's in the family yeah and of course with the release of toward the cold light is there any plans to do like touring behind it did or just like make it just studio only i don't really see how it would work to perform live i mean the amount of 
work and kind of session musicians that would have to be involved to make it cool. Like you'd need like a string quartet and then I would have to really practice piano to like be able to play, uh, execute everything reliably and then play to a, to a click with the tracks. Um, I mean, I think it would be amazing, but it would be the amount of doing it would take to make that happen. Uh, you know, the demand would have to be really high. Yeah. <laughs> never of. say never. <laughs> I mean, I, I would love to, you know, and I would love to, to, for people to, to get that into the record to where that, that could be a thing. But, um, you know, no, I, I, I have no plans. Um, you know, I just want to kind of, I think really what I, what I'm hoping in terms of like, the career aspect of it is like just sort of getting on people's radar that, uh, Hey, I'm, you know, I'm just, I'm going to keep experimenting and doing different things. And it might be in this vein and it might be in a different vein. And, and, you know, I have some other stuff that I've been working on that's basically very close to done. Um, and I'm just going to sort of keep releasing things independently and, and, you know, hopefully I can find an audience for the sort of esoteric shit that, that, you know, makes me happy, you know, <laughs> and it's all the kind of stuff that, you know, I'm, I really, I'm a, I'm a firm believer in doing it outside of, you know, exhumed and, and gruesome and pounder or whatever, you know, it's like, I, for all my metal stuff, I want to keep it, you know, you know, for lack of a better word, I just want to keep it ideologically sort of pure, you know, I like, I do have that, that death metal snob purist in me that, you know, when I got human, when I was a kid, I was angry because they took out the fucking drippy blood and, you know, the cross wasn't inverted. And when I got even like necroticism, I was like, where's the carcass logo, man? This sucks. So, you know, there's still, I still have that like, you know, angry teenager viewpoint on death metal. And I don't want to have this stuff leak into those bands. And I think, you know, hopefully people appreciate that. And, and you know, I don't want <clears throat> to... I want to, I just want to keep it, keep it separate so that it's, it, it's a, I have the freedom to do whatever I want without sort of, um, you know, taking something that means something to other people and turning it into something else. You know, I feel like as, as if it's just my name, I can just do whatever the fuck I want. And people will be like, either like, oh, I like this, but this sucks. Or just like, you know, they don't have to have that expectation. Whereas if it's an exhumed room, all of a sudden it's like all this, these ambient interludes and, you know, 10 minutes of like mellow shit, you know, I would be pissed if I bought that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, thank you, Matt, for this conversation. It was great oh, to yeah. be able to talk with you. With you, um, with you, of course we have this new solo album out, but sort of like in the end to sort of wrap things up, what's next for like your other projects like exhumed or gruesome and stuff, if you're allowed to say. Um, sure. Well, the, the big thing right now is we just announced a tour, an Exhumed tour with Skeletal Remains and Morbicon. And the tour is basically a celebration. The, the first Exhumed record came out 25 years ago last October. So we're still very much in the 25th anniversary phase of the record. Um, and basically Slaughter Cult, that, that got reissued on vinyl and cassette last year. And then Slaughter Cult... Anatomy is Destiny and the In the Name of Gore split with Hemdale are all getting reissued on vinyl. Um, so we are doing basically like a moldy oldies tour where we just go out and play stuff from the first three albums and the Hemdale split, which is something that people have been, you know, sort of bugging us about for a while, you know. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, I know after I, <laughs> I had spoken with j Dog from Hell's Headbangers a, a couple of times on the internet and you know, he's giving me a lot of grief. Like, oh, why don't you guys play this obscure track? Why don't you guys play this or whatever? So uh, if you're one of those people that's been wondering that this is the tour for you, so please come. Yeah, play and, the, the know, most obscure demo track. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going quite that far, but just like I said, <laughs> first three albums in the Hemdale split. So, you know, if you've been wanting to hear, you know, fucking Bonefucker or, you know, This Axe Was Made to Grind or any of those tracks, this is the time to come and, um, you know, it's one of those things where it's it's we've been hearing about it for a long time and people have been asking about it, but it's hard to gauge how much of that is like a vocal minority and um, or how much people really, you know, this is what they want. So 
we're gonna go out and do it and we'll have all the early records on vinyl and we'll be you know we're doing fucking new production we're doing meet and greets and a bunch of new shit so it's gonna be a fun tour um the skeletal guys are great the morbicon guys are great um they're all friends of ours so it should be really fun and um you know hopefully people turn up and, and make the shows killer you know so that's kind of the that and the new gruesome record which we are um you know we're going to be recording basically over the summer um i guess you're the first person i've talked to about that publicly so maybe that's a scoop i don't know yeah. <laughs> um so we're finalizing those plans basically you know over the next like week or so and then with left to die you know which is me doing it's me and Gus from Gruesome, and we, we do all the leprosy stuff and some of the screen bloody gore stuff from, from death. You know, the stuff that Terry and Rick played on and the stuff that they toured for. You know, and Rick also, like I said, co-wrote a lot of leprosy stuff and some of the early, you know, demo stuff as well. So we're, we're going, uh, we're playing at the end of the month in the Midwest for three shows, and then we're going to Europe uh, at the end of summer for a bunch of festivals, and we'll be there for a month. So into the oldies, and I'm very excited about that. And then... Uh, Beyond that, you know, I'm sure there's going to be more stuff, uh, you know, coming up very soon. So, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Matt. So is this, oh, yeah. is there just any final words you want to say to the viewers that are watching this to close this out? Uh, I would just say thanks for watching and, you know, thanks for supporting my various projects uh, through, through the years, man. I really appreciate it. You know, it's like all the shit that we do, uh, you know, in our bands, we couldn't do without, you know, the people supporting it, you know, and then that, so uh, I'm very grateful to to be able to continue doing this as you know, <laughs> as you reminded me, <laughs> decades in to doing this. So I, I'm stoked. And uh, you know, if you want to hear some sort of mellow, contemplative, uh, melancholy, bittersweet, ambient shit, check out my uh, my solo record. And if you just want to come out and get drunk and rage, you know, come to the Exhum tour, and I'll see you there. Awesome. So everybody, Matt Harvey from Exhumed and Gruesome, see you next time. Cheers, bud.